Hi there, LinkedIn family. Jonathan here from Social Me Too. And I'm joined today by two amazing women who I've had the pleasure of coming into contact with. And they're going to recount their stories and we're going to have a discussion about social media and why there is a need for this Social Me Too movement. Um, it's something which it's reported so much all the abuses racist slurs violence death threats and yet so far i've had very few uh, stories put on the website social me social me org so if you're watching this and you go to www.socialme2.org you can leave a story on that website and it is completely anonymous you don't have to give us your email address. You don't have to use your real name. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. You just write your story. I get to proofread it and then I'll publish it. And what I'm hoping to achieve through this is that once we've got stories in each of the categories, people that have suffered in the same way as you, the story writer, it will resonate with them and they'll go, ah, me too like the me too movement that's what this is about it's about listen we're not going to change the behavior of people let's no. be honest men that use these tactics but what we can do is take victims out of the shame self-reflection mode because every woman i've ever spoken to the first thing when something horrible happens to her is she asks herself what have i done and you are never to blame. So let's get on with this. I'll get on my high horse later in the episode. Introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Sharon Cavelli. I'm an early childhood educator. I deal with children who are turning two. When my children come to my classroom in September, they are still crawling with no words. And by the time they leave me in June, they are walking and they are talking. We love to read. We love to sing. And I, my dream is to read to children all over the world, especially those children who are ill, either in hospitals or sick at home. There's no such thing as too many songs. There's no such thing as too many books. I use link, LinkedIn exclusively as a professional networking platform. And it's a pleasure to meet the caliber of people that I meet on LinkedIn. Lovely, lovely. Uh, Inga. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Inga, and I am known as a, a networking ninja. I'm hired by entrepreneurs to help them develop a LinkedIn strategy to stand out and connect with their ideal community. Many people have no idea where to begin when it comes to networking, especially online. Well, I'm there to guide them through this learning curve and help them navigate the space that is so unknown to them. I, as you can hear by my introduction, I love LinkedIn. Um, and I've had many positive experiences and met incredible people on this platform, but I've also had some neg negative experiences, um, but I just don't allow that to outshine what um, the positivity that I've experienced. Excellent, excellent. Um, it's very interesting that because, um, so, I think, and, and, and ladies um, chime in, but I think that what happens is that there are so many detritus of male behavior when it comes through in these abusive or negative uh, statements that women I speak to and men I've spoken to will see it delete it block them and it's like i'm not interested in you go away go away go away go away and so what happens is the go away go away just becomes a habit like a tick um mm. and people uh and 
correct me where I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem to me that the LinkedIn algorithm, when you make a complaint about a uh, connection or a DM, doesn't seem to want to do anything about it. 